Right, we're live. We're back. Thirsty Thursdays is back. I'm going to pull in our guests so we can get introduced to everyone and they will tell you who they are, where they're from and why they're here. Now, Thirsty Thursdays has been offline for three years and seven months and it is just too long. So everyone, make sure that you grab a drink and we're going to start quenching our thirst for some knowledge. Now, my name is Seti. I'm from Flipped Classroom Tutorials or FlippedTutorials.com. I'm going to pull in our first guest of this week, and we've got James. James, do you want to introduce uh, yeah. yourself? Yes, I'm James Bella. I teach in Malaysia, and uh, I'm one of the original members of the Thirsty Thursday crew. Um, yes. I've moved a bit right. further south, <laughs> and uh, the key thing is it's actually the topic that I chose because last week we actually lost a week's learning um, thanks to the haze, which has been burnt quite a lot of Indonesia and come throughout the whole of Malaysia and uh, is now moving its way northward into Thailand. So I just think it's a really important thing. And it's something you should think about before it happens, if you know what I mean. What Absolutely. can you pull together? Absolutely. Brilliant. I am, I'm looking forward to discussing the topic. Now, just for people that have not watched this before or anything, it's a very informal chat. We're just pulling everyone in one at a time this time around. Next mm -hmm. time, we'll all be there right from the start. So, yep. shall we pull in the next one? Oh, Another yes. Old -timer. We've got an old-timer ready to come Ooh. in. I can see him. He's got his gray hairs right up there. Right, Ralph, come on in. Hi there. Um, it's me, Ralph, speaking out of Bangkok as well. I am a tech integrator and tech coordinator at uh, BC ISB, which is a uh, British Columbian International School, Bangkok. And I also have been uh, part of GEG uh, Thursday, Thursday from the beginning. And I have experience with the topic from a long time ago where there was a flood in Bangkok. And actually at the school I was working at that time, um, that was the reason for us to commit to Google Classroom. And we um, tried to bridge the, I think it was nearly two weeks where there were no classes possible. And we used uh, Google Classroom to connect to our students and i'm very happy that we are doing this okay brilliant right that's three of us in here right we've got another old timer he's waiting patiently Ooh. waiting i can see the smile on his face right Ark, come on in yeah, hello everyone yeah, yes yes hello everyone my name is Ark. i'm from the philippines and i think i started uh, being involved in you know with the uh, with the gang I think when we went to a Google Summit uh, with Davis, and so it's way, way back, like, I don't know, ages. And then with CT doing another Google Summit as well, and then Google Educator uh, Group. And yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun. And then I'm glad to be back here in that thirsty, uh, thirsty Thursday. So yeah, thanks. Right. Um so it's already been quickly said, but we're going to keep it really informal. Um, I think the topic is already somewhat clear because um, I think James and Ralph have given it away that the topic for this week is <laughs> really all about school closures. Um, so let's just quickly pull up our topic. Um, so this week we're going to look at how to connect with students when school closures happen, when they're, you know, obviously for various reasons. Um, Ralph mentioned the flood in Bangkok, which I vividly remember. Uh, many schools were shut, and we did not know how long it would take. And then, James, you literally just went through it this week. Yeah, it was last week. And as I say, um, there's not much you can do when the haze is making it very difficult to breathe. Yeah, well, so we, we're going to have a quick chat. Just, I mean, we've got, I see we've got two viewers now, so I just want to welcome the viewers. Um, whoever it is, drop in that chat. Let us know uh, what would you do when the school closes. Um, otherwise, if you're watching this later, you can always just skip ahead or go back and watch a bit more. Or some of our old sessions. I mean, some of our old sessions are just completely, yeah, they're all over the place. Um, so hopefully we can make it uh, useful. I don't know. Do you want to share first then, James? Or Yeah, I mean, I think um, what's really powerful is, is, is thinking about it. I think I'm quite lucky uh, in some ways because, you know, I'm a computing teacher. So most of my resources were electronically in the first place. Now I'm going to show you a few resources that really help to elevate it. Now the first one of course is Google Classroom, which hopefully most people uh, use. But the, the couple that really just helped the students to really connect were, are we ready for this? 
Yeah, we're ready. We're ready for it. I'm and it's the, it's the screen. share. It's my screen, screen sharing. Add your screen in there. Okay, perfect. Right, so the first one that I found really, really useful was Edpuzzle because this means that you can share videos, ask questions, and, and put that on. And the second one, uh, slightly more obvious, but YouTube, just being able to record your presentations. And people don't realize that uh, Keynote, PowerPoint, um, they can all record presentations really easily. You just have to talk in and it will do the presentation. Uh, the one I recorded was the Von Neumann cycle. And honestly, it took me about 30 minutes. Now, of course, as soon as school opens, uh, you discover that uh, there was another feature which they launched the week after you, you opened and would have been really <laughs> handy. And as a coder, <laughs> multiplayer replit sounds fantastic beyond fantastic. But of course, it happens the week I'm back and don't need it anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah. Have but I think for future some, things. Have you considered taking some of these things that you've had to sort of start using during the closure and bringing them into your main way of teaching or your main uh, sharing? Yeah, I mean, I think that the Ed Puzzle is really useful and I quite regularly record things on YouTube, particularly for students who are missing the lesson. But normally what I do is I just get a student to press the button on their phone or their iPad and then yeah. share it later on YouTube. I mean, YouTube is just, I mean, to, to be able to record anything for anybody anytime is just incredible. I mean, there's no barrier for making films, videos, whatever. No argument there. No argument. I'm, I'm in the YouTube camp. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. Right. I mean, we're streaming this on YouTube, so we wouldn't be streaming this on YouTube if we didn't believe in YouTube. Yeah, uh, it's hard yeah, not no, to believe in YouTube, really, isn't it? <laughs> if, anyone, if anyone's interested, I've popped the, the two titles on screen there. So we've got Ad Puzzle YouTube. Yes. Obviously, everyone knows where to find YouTube. If you could drop a link in that comment section to the Ad Puzzle, that'd be brilliant just for some viewers so they can keep it in the in, for future references. Sure. Anyone else used Ed puzzle before and want to share about that ralph or arc have you used it Just, i have sorry, used that before, puzzle. before we've got an extra person now in the backstage and i've just I've got, to, I've got to pull him in so uh yeah if we could all just welcome gary gary do you want to quickly introduce yourself hi good evening i'm gary garcia from the philippines brilliant welcome now gary you're linked That's to it. one of the gegs in the philippines aren't you Yes, I'm from GEG Ortigas, and also I'm also the learning captain for uh, GEG Philippines. And you were my coach. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I didn't realize that bit. <laughs> Guys, get in touch with Gary. Get yes, I am. Gary, He's got, he knows where to pull and which strings to pull. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank so, you yeah, for Gary, mentioning thank that. Thank you for joining our relaunch. It's, it's a big one. It's a big relaunch. Um, yeah, again, people, if you see it on YouTube, share it out. We're going to share it out, too. Just share it into the socials. Uh, I see we've got three people watching now. So those three people, welcome. Drop something in the chat. Let us know that you're here. And we might pull your comments into the stream. So back to nice. James and Ralph and Ark and Gary, maybe, as well. Have any of you used Edpuzzle before? So um, I, I find Adpuzzle very amazing because you can uh, check if um, the students are just watching and switch their brain on or off. Yeah? And uh, students have a fair chance to get a second chance. So uh, quickly explained, you watch a video, the video stops, and then you are presented with a question or a writing question. And um, that's a very, very nice tool to make... Um, remote lessons interactive for them. And many of us uh, who know that there are different learning styles. Um, I was always a very visual, practical learner. So um, I think that many students are happy to do uh, other activities. That yeah, 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 yeah. the thing which is uh, not that easy with Edpuzzle is yet you need to be prepared. You need to look for videos which fit your topic and probably make up the questions yourself. It's not where, like in a Kahoot, where you can just search for a topic and use it. So you need to prepare a bit more than uh, just to take it out of the box, maybe. But yeah, yeah. It's, no, worth I, it. it's worth it. I, def I agree. I love the fact that you can see if your students have actually watched the video and how much have they've watched. Um, that's something I often forget. It's sort of like, you can't, it's not just controlling the video, the start and ending times, because you can do that in other tools. You can do that with, you know, different linking tools. You can do it within Google Slides. You can control that, but you can sort of 
force the students to stop at one minute, ask a question, prompt them with sort of a, a follow up, and then you can see if they've actually watched it. So um, yeah, I love I love the suggestion of Edpuzzle definitely. And yes, you can even uh, prevent skipping. So if they don't yeah. get a question right and they press rewatch, they have to rewatch the last minute or two minutes. And um, yeah. they are, so to say, a bit punished for not watching properly the first time. It's not a punishment. Just they have to go through this yeah. time, which reinforces um, that you try hard to get it right the first time. Right. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, just quickly, our main topic this week is how to connect with students when school closures happen, when we're forced, let's say, floods, or as James said, with the haze that happened. Um, we've got two people in the back room right now and we're going to pull the next one in so gabriel i hope you're ready because he's sort of hiding there he's in the back he's got his headphones mm -hmm. on so we're just going to quickly pull a, pull you in if you want to just quickly introduce yourself where you're teaching and what you are doing here my friend hi how's it going guys i'm here in bangkok thailand i teach uh All right. primary yeah i teach primary education i'm from canada also google certified trainer and um yeah, just everything related to technology. Um, not just Google, not just Apple, but also uh, Microsoft uh, for education. Recently got into uh, Minecraft for education. Uh, it's a fantastic application. So, yeah. But um, it's, a, it's an interesting point that you mentioned about the haze because actually today a student of mine was wearing this necklace on her, she was wearing a necklace and also a mask. And I asked her, like, what's that necklace? And it, it's a necklace. And, and she said to me, oh, this is a necklace that basically sucks all of the pollution into it. And I was like, I don't know if that works, but my God, I should have thought about that because I had two of my students that had one of those necklaces. I don't know if it works, but Look, hey. If it, if it gives them, if, they give, if it gives you peace of mind, I mean, that's great. But I, I remember um, very specifically, and I mean, He's in the back room now, so we've got Gary in the back room. But when we went to Singapore just a couple of weeks ago, my goodness, the haze was... I think it was just starting. I'm not sure. When did it start for you, James? Uh, about it, a week before that. Yeah, so it was... We it was a little bit there. better until... Yeah, well, on the Saturday and the, the Sunday, it was getting as bad as Malaysia, but then it got even worse in Malaysia and yeah, Singapore. Was, I mean, both got was, really bad. It was shocking. It was shocking because we walked in. Yeah. It was a beautiful morning. Went in, had a whole day there. Um, brilliant, brilliant professional development. Again, get in touch with Gary. I'm going to pull him back in in a minute. Um, we are at the moment limited to having a maximum of five. Hold on a minute. We can get six people in. We've got all six people in the stream now. So we're <laughs> great, great. So, um, yeah, get in touch with Gary or myself because we 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 need to we need to start nominating some people now. We need to get the yes. Uh, let's, let's just say that um, there's something in it for us as well. <laughs> yes <laughs> so um but yeah that haze was just I, I mean we've seen pollution here in bangkok and i've seen pollution but what we saw when we left those offices that was just it was it was on a whole other level that was just... uh one one thing i want to ask i guess that uh, singapore itself is not as much as at fault as bangkok is uh, polluting itself because singapore i guess is surrounded I think, I think it was because you could really smell it and like taste it. It's definitely the whole slash and burn, just sort of, it, it just yeah. smelled like burn. But do they do it on Singapore soil? Is it? No, it's, it, it's all coming from Indonesia. Okay. And um, I, I can't believe it, but last weekend, uh, people were going to Bangkok for fresh air. That's how well, bad it was in Malaysia. Yes, so when, we, when we had our pollution, it was very clearly pollution. Like you could smell it. It was it was car pollution. It was the, the pollution in general. Um, apart from that, I mean, it was very different what we experienced there. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at the comments. See if there's any new comments in there. There we go. We're gonna pull someone in. So uh, we've got Davis. Davis is definitely watching us. So he's one <laughs> of our viewers. Davis is watching us. Thumbs up, Davis. Thank you. Hi, Davis. Cool that you're here. We're live. We're live on YouTube. You might not be able to join us this week, but there is a share button share this video while we're live people can join in afterwards they can still watch it later um so yeah oh we've got another one okay we've got steven steven's here as well no many of us know steven so steven welcome welcome from indonesia 
Um, again, same thing, share it. Socials, share it on the socials. Um, just quickly for those just joining us, we're talking about um, how you can keep your students involved and how you can connect with your students when there's school closures. Um, and we've just had James and James shared, you know, how he's using YouTube and Edpuzzle. This week, I'm trying to moderate it a little bit. Next week, if we've got a volunteer, have a think about it because it's going to be one of you and I'm going to take a back seat next week. So I'm going to need you to do all the talking. And I'm in, in fact, I was going to suggest we do it on a roulette wheel basis until everybody's Perfect. out of turn. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, this way we can have it more often as well. We can actually do yeah. some weekly ones. Good idea. Not everyone has to pop in. So the more of us yeah. that are here. Um, that actually brings me to the next one. And this is someone that you don't know yet. And he's actually in mm -hmm. the backstage right now. He's in the back room. Um, and I just wanted to bring him in. He's a very special guest. And it ties in with this subject because one of the things that I really love, and I think Ralph quickly sort of mentioned it, is Google Classroom. Now, Google Classroom <laughs> is amazing. It's an amazing tool. Um, if you've got students, you want to in involve your students, you want to share and communicate with them, Classroom is incredibly powerful. Now, one of those things that I always hear people say is, oh, I, I wish I knew what my kids and my students were doing, and I wish how I knew how they were doing it, and I mm -hmm. wish I knew exactly you know, what they were spending their time on. And look, we, we're teachers. We're control freaks. We want to know exactly what's going on, right? We want to know where they got <laughs> yes, their information yes. from. We want to know how they did it. So big announcements. And I'm actually I'm not going to do all the talking here because I'm, I'm literally just going to pull them in. Um, we've got our special our special guest right here. We've got Eric. So Eric, if you want to just quickly introduce yourself to everyone, and then we're going to pull you into the stream. Hello, he hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> so Hi, Eric, cool to here. see you. Eric, do you want to yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself? Who are you? Where you're from? And why am I pulling you in when I'm talking about Google Classroom? Okay, so um, I am a teacher in Korea. I've been here for um, since 2010, but I've uh, been in an international high school since 2014. And um, I have designed uh, an extension that takes all of the work that's done in a revision history of Google Docs and puts it on a timeline. So I can see when students are working, what kinds of things they're doing, get a lot of previews of different kinds of information like comments, suggestions, pasting, and um, just get an overview so that I know basically what's going on. The thing is, I really like the, the revision history of Google Docs and I, um, I found it really useful, but it was really hard to go through, really hard to pick through uh, when I wanted to figure anything out. And so I, this extension takes a whole assignment or multiple assignments that you select and displays all of the work from those assignments on a timeline at once. So, it you know, for example, I'll use it in class, and I'll say, okay, well, uh, you know, these students look like they're working, and these students don't look like they're working, and yet they're typing a lot on their, you know, computers. So, are they on task? Maybe they're working in a separate copy of what they're supposed to be doing, and and everything's really fine. Maybe they're not. So it tells me where to focus my attention during class, but also during any time outside of class, then it tells me, it collects all of the information, tells me how much people have done in total and when they've done their work. And yeah, so it's it's a great, at a glance way to tell what's going on and what's not. Look, anyone watching right now, you have to check this out. Like, honestly, it is just, it's mind blowing. I if you first think was so amazed. Lot, to see if it. you think you've got oh, a lot of That's so nice to hear. Within G Suite, like this is actually this is going to answer and any any anything that you're wondering about when you're working in Google Classroom, Classwork Zoom is going to take care of the rest. Like it's an amazing tool. Wow. Now I didn't tell you this, Eric. I don't know if you have you got a separate tab open that you could sort of use to sort of demo some of the features later on. Sure, uh, sure, yeah. I think um, I mean we're going to be here for a while. We're just going to have a quick a quick chat. Um, I just yeah. found out that we're limited or capped to six people. Which uh -huh. means that Ark, Ark is still here. He's just been pushed back to the back room. Uh, All right. There, Ark. I can still see you, so you just wave at me if you want to jump back in. Um, once we've got someone sharing their screen, that is also going to count as one of our six screens. So someone right. else is going to have to take a little bit of a back seat, but now we can just always pull you back in. Um, also, again, so so far we've got um, Edpuzzle, YouTube, now Google Classroom, and again, with the combination of Classwork Zoom, um, have any of you heard of Classwork Zoom before? Or not yet. 
There we go. We've got Ralph's hand going up. Ralph's heard yeah, about nice. it. There you go. I wonder where he's heard about it. Mm. <laughs> See, well, um, so what I wanted to say is um, yeah. I haven't uh, tried out a lot. Uh -huh. And um, but a tip which I noticed today is that it works very well if you advise your students to give um, um, to name revisions. Mm -hmm. And then in the bars, you see um, extra lines for each revision name. And that mm -hmm. is pretty awesome. We had a, a graphic work to do today. So it was a design uh -huh. work. Yeah. And I, I told them that they have to change um, colors. Uh -huh. And each time they change colors, they use a different um, title for their, it's not actually the title, but it's a, what is it called? Revision name, yeah, or uh -huh. name this yeah. revision. Uh -huh. And then in the in the timeline, you see each revision name and how much time they spend on each revision. So in to quickly, I would love to show the task, but I'm not prepared to anonym, anonymize all the students' work. Right. So um, the task was to create uh, something about design principles, and uh -huh. then they had to j just change the color theme. And I was even able to tell that for the um, for the last revision, the color yeah. change took them only three minutes. And for the first revision, they had to change color. It took them to 10 minutes. So I could see that they progressed in speed each time they had to do a change. That was awesome for me to see. And uh, Eric, I can't uh, possibly tell you how inspiring um, your work is. It looks oh. nice. It is. It, it's awesome. I'm, so I'm nice to hear. desperate to see uh, more of its functions and more of its usages in the classroom. Cool, cool. See, I, you is, know, yeah, go ahead, this go ahead. Is why I really wanted to pull you in, Eric, because it's just it's one of those things where, like, we're always talking about teacherpreneurs and teachers sort of going outside and answering the questions that they are challenged with. And I mean, you've just done it. You saw an you saw an opportunity. You couldn't do something you wanted to do, and what did you do? You just built it. Well, you know, I looked for a long time and I didn't see what I was looking for and I couldn't believe that it didn't exist. And then, you know, I, uh, there was an opportunity to, um, you know, I figured out that you can get developers, uh, on upwork.com like really accessibly. And, uh, and so I just drew something up. He's, he's a genius. Careful with him. What, yeah, what? To get you, James. Nice. <laughs> he's the wizard when it comes the to guy above you, the guy uh, over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just look up and you'll see him. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So yeah, so I just like drew something up and it was supposed to take about 30 hours to come up with this thing that I drew up. And in 30 hours we came up with something like it. But then I was always like, okay, how about if you do this? How about if you do that? And it's been like going on three years now, but I it's kind of amazing and I can't believe that I that it's mine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just rock. gonna quickly Thanks. That website. So there's the website link. So maybe later on in our discussion, we can sort of pull it in and have a look at it. Yeah, um, I wonder if um, maybe I might need to switch IDs because the, the best yeah, no stuff problem. is, I mean, is on my other ID. Link, so by all means, just, you know, pop back in. You'll be in the backstage. I can call you back in. And Yeah, so, uh, so let me, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, I'll send you my, now. I'll send you my other, my school ID because that's got, I've got a demo class that I can show you in there. Okay, brilliant. No problem. Cool. No problem. So yeah. I'm going to carry on now, and then we'll see you later with a demo. Um, okay. Gary, do you want to do you want to carry on and maybe share a little bit about our main topic as to how we can better connect with our students when there's school closures? Oh, wait, you got me there. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm putting you on the spot. Like, yes, honestly, you're, you're putting, on, you're you're putting on me to moderate this one. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for it. I'm just gonna keep okay. going. I'm gonna keep. Okay, you. can you but please put again a question? We've got four people watching right now, and they've not left. They're there. <laughs> They're interested. Okay. They want to hear put us. Put again the question. By the way, leave, leave, the question. leave the comments if you're watching. Leave that comment because we need to see it. We want to pull it in, and we want oh, to yeah. show who you are. So leave a comment. Okay, let's have. Let's look for some question. Oh, right. okay, no, no, go ahead, no. Gary, 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 Gary. Yes, yeah, see tomorrow, tomorrow, big disaster. You can't go to school. Your students need you. What do you do? Oh. Ah, what, what I can do is I can make a screencastify. So Brilliant. I can make myself available for everyone. And that's it. Maybe the, I think that's the best <laughs> thing I can think of. You're not going to get away with that. Look what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually put you on big screen. 
Okay. There you go. <laughs> and then, Gary, Screencastify. Why Screencastify you, and not any of the Explain how it works, Gary. Okay. Screencastify works like you're uh, taking a video, uh, a screen recording, and at the same time, you're on the upper or lower part of it. And then it's like you discussing everything in class, but it's a recorded video. So uh, it's like uh, they can also they can also watch the video anytime they want. They can they can po pause it, and it's automatically saved in your uh, Google Drive, and you can also share it in your YouTube channel. Brilliant! Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else here using Screencast software or something like Explain Everything or different applications? Anyone else here? I mean, I'm so using Camtasia, but that's not free or or cheap. But it, it, no, it, no, does, no. it does make life a lot easier if you're doing a lot of screencasts. Right, on that note, I'll probably drop some affiliate links in that description later on. But uh, yeah, carry on. <laughs> By the way, Screencastify maximum is 10 minutes. Uh, after that, you need to create another one. Okay. Yeah. The if doesn't you have that. For the full version. Yeah, the free version is maybe 10 minutes, but the full version, I think, is unlimited. It's longer. Is it not? Yes. Yes, it's longer. So I would, I would give the developer a big shout out and maybe um, to give another big shout out to Davis, who's probably uh, watching. When there was a time where extensions were a new thing to me, and there was a time where I had the my hands on a first Chromebook, and um, the first big question was, well, how do I record a video? I can shoot uh, with a camera up, I can shoot pictures. And then Davis introduced me to Screencastify, which has been a steady companion of mine for flipping the classroom, which Sati is the professional. But um, I agree the the base version is only seven minutes or 10 now. And it's, and, um, and it's a bit... Uh, not very tricky. You have to be tech savvy to set it up correctly so you can see your face or hear the uh, internal audio or only your voice. So there's a lot of options to it um, to use and it's very versatile and uh, great. On the Chromebook, it's a must have tool. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I, has anyone else used Screencastify or how about you, Gabriel? Have you used any of these uh, screencast softwares or? Yeah, I, I did it when I was doing my uh, Google Trainer video. So I mm -hmm. used Screencastify to do it that way. But um, yeah, I, I mostly, right now I'm using Adobe Rush in order to create okay. uh, videos and teaching students how to do that. So I've kind of moved away from me sort of making instructional videos and instead now I'm showing the students how to make their own videos and teaching a lot of video principles um, that I've learned through Adobe. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a whole range of different extensions that you, can, that, you, that you can use to record your your screen. And there's, I mean, Screencastify is definitely one of them. Um, it's not my favorite, I think, because it's- What's your of, favorite, then? Nimbus, absolutely, Nimbus. I'm gonna try Nimbus, that. Nimbus screen recorder. It's, it's free, uh, it's unlimited. Mm -hmm. There's no watermarks, it's completely free. Um, the premium version allows you for HD recording, so that's where they sort of that's where you've got the difference between your your freemium. Um, so, but if it's, when it comes to teaching, like you just use that. Um, Nimbus is a great one, and I've actually I remember I did a, a video on the Apps Events channel just I think a month and a half ago. So if if you go to the Apps Events channel, you'll find it with five of my favorite screen recorders. Now, Screencastify is one of them. Um, but there's so many out there. I mean, you've got Loom. Loom is, in it. is brilliant. Um, has anyone used Loom before? No? Okay, so basically, going away from this, uh, install two different extensions. Loom, L-O-O-M, and Nimbus Screen Recorder. They are incredibly powerful. They have no time limits in terms of what you're recording. Um, the <clears> only <throat> downside is, okay, there's a bit of a watermark with one of them. And then the other one, you're you're capped at. I think it's, I'm not, I think it's, yeah, it's not seven. No, you need to pay for the HD quality. But apart from that, they're great. And also, um, the premium versions of these allow you to export or download the video as an MP4 file, whereas the free versions don't allow you to do that. But there's literally hundreds of websites out there that you can use to convert video file formats. 
So mm. realistically, that's not an issue. It's just an extra step. But if you're willing to do that, then what's the problem? Also, the WebM format that you get, you can just easily upload that to YouTube. And then YouTube allows you to download it as an MP3 file, uh, MP4 file. So you can use YouTube as a video converter, which a lot of people don't realize. Yeah. So you can upload your video as a private video and then download it and you will get an MP4 file. So I mean, the other thing I realized about... By default. Sorry, James. Screencast. I was just going to say, um, the other thing about YouTube is it's a great subtitling package. So if oh, you yeah, want brilliant. to record audio um, and just upload it, it'll subtitle better than anything else I know. Yeah, so here, hold on. Let me just quickly see. Um, so Loom Premium allows you to record videos up to 4K. So that's basically their premium. Um, the free version, you have a 100 video limit on their storage. But then again, if you use YouTube, YouTube becomes your cloud storage. So that's not necessarily an issue. And it's unlimited uh, recordings. And you can pass password protect your videos, which is, again, sort of something Vimeo has and YouTube doesn't have. Um, and then the other one, uh, yeah, Nimbus, that's my go-to one. I mean, Nimbus is my all-time favorite, really, just because it's so easy to use. And you can use it for screenshots as well. So I use it as my combined screenshot screen recorder um, for Chrome. And but the, you can't edit in Nimbus, is that correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. You can. Um, but if you get the premium package, then you get a video editor as well. So the screenshots you can edit and you can annotate. That's free. Um, if you want to edit your videos... It's basic edits. It's like cropping and trimming and stuff. Um, basic edits. But stitching together as well? Uh, no, no. Mm. No stitching for as far as I'm aware. Um, video editing on a Chromebook is still a pain point. It's an ongoing pain point. I find it quite uh, uh, drastic. I find it quite surprising that there's no good tool and that they... It's very sad that the uh, old uh, YouTube editor has been removed um, with these functions. I don't know what the reason behind that is well i mean they are making they're, they're making the move they're making the move to the the youtube studio beta and the the new editor is in there and i i mean i'm i'm sure that we're going to have loads of new features come to that like mm. it's just so denying that it's just but we have been today. waiting for new features yeah, yeah, yeah we've been waiting but they've been developing the beta like literally every week there's new stuff coming out i mean not many people are waiting for a video editor because they're using a lot of other platforms. Um, I think and and also, people... most of the Chromebooks are not really powerful enough to do that video editing locally. It would have to it's be extremely have to expensive cloud. on cloud editing. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've got Wii Video, which is it is reasonable, but it's expensive if you want to go with mm. premium. Um, so, yeah, that's that's sort of where we're at on, the, on Chrome. So, yeah, so the two that I would suggest are... Um, Loom Nimbus. and Nimbus screen recorders. So ha have a look, check them out. Gary, you had Screencastify. Anything else that you would recommend in terms of sort of video editing? Maybe Gabriel, anything you can think of that you? Um, can yeah, use you can Adobe use. Um, yeah, so you can use Adobe Creative uh, Cloud, where you can do some of your editing like in the Adobe Cloud system, basically. Um, so yeah, that's one of the advantages. The only issue with that is that if you want to like post it, they give you like, I think it's like five free uploads. And then after that you have to buy an account, which I think is like $29 a month. Okay. Okay. So that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that seems to be the way forward, isn't it? Most, most platforms seem to have sort of a free, wow, that was interesting. Uh, so have sort of a, a free and a, and a premium version to things. Um, are there any platforms that that's actually come to think of it? That might be the next question. Is there any platform that you pay for on a monthly basis and that you would recommend to our viewers? Because we're up to five now. So we've definitely got more people. If you could just drop, jump in the comment section, let us know you're here. Um, and then we can just pull your comments in. Um, but that being said, any platforms that you happily pay for monthly fees that help you to better connect with your students? Um, I don't know who wants to. James, I can to I can maybe? say something a little more about oh, Loom. Yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I went ahead and paid for the premium on that, and honestly, I can't remember what it was. But but um, basically, I was using it so much because my students. I do this really big project every year where they're getting um, ready for a play, and. Um, uh, sorry to interrupt you. It's ten a month. I just have a quick look. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, so, so they're um, they're doing this play, and they have all sorts of uh, jobs. I mean, they're doing the whole thing. There's a student director. 
uh, student stage manager. Basically, unless it's a safety issue, like if it's a creative choice, they win. Um, I, I'm not in charge of it, but I'm helping to guide them. But they're going in so many different directions and I'm encouraging them to, them to learn different things on their own and show me evidence of their learning. And so we use Loom all the time. We use Loom for like weeks and months um, so that they can independently show me everything that they've done. They can use it to show me their screen uh, when they're doing research. They can use it to show me their webcam when they're actually doing work. Um, and so I went ahead and paid because uh, at a certain point you have to pay to, to uh, retain a certain number of videos that they're sharing with me. Um, but yeah, I just find it really useful. The, the way I'm doing it doesn't have a time limit. The kids don't have a time limit yeah, and yeah. Uh, the watermark isn't a, an issue. So yeah, yeah that, that really works for me. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, Ark, Ark, I see you're still muted and you're playing on your phone there right now, but I've pulled you back into the screen. <laughs> Anything you'd like to say? Sorry. It's been a while since you've, been, you've been stuck in that backstage. Um, sorry, I'm being a terrible moderator. I'm trying to struggle with all these no different No problem, no problem. I am learning a yeah, lot from um, here. Have you been able to follow? Have you been able to follow the conversation, or? Yes, I am. I'm able, and I would just like okay, to share, you? yeah, about screen, screen scastify. I actually taught it to yeah, my yeah. students, and the the good thing about it is that I, uh, I, I found that uh, it's easier for them to upload. It's faster rather than like uh, uploading with their own video camera. And then compared to uh, using Screencastify, Screencastify can uh, immediately upload their videos in their Google Drives and then just put the link in my Google Classroom. So uh, I made my students use it. Or YouTube, yes. But yeah, mostly I made them uh, just copy the link in their Google, Google uh, Drive and then put the link in my uh, assignment section. So... That's what I love about Screencastify. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, you're not the only one. I just pulled in the comments. See, we've got Stephen. Stephen saying, yeah, I love Screencastify. So we've got definitely other people very excited about Screencastify. Um, and then we've got Davis sharing one of his extensions. So he's saying there's another extension called Awesome Screenshots. So that's another one that obviously allows you to take screenshots and do more with that. So, um, yeah, thank you, Stephen, and thank you, Davis, for jumping in the comment section. Um, and then we've got one of our own jumping in the comment section, so I think <laughs> that means that I'm talking too much. Um, James, I'm, gonna, I'm going to leave it to you. Take the wheel. Yeah, um, just, I mean, obviously for the Chromebooks, the, there are various limits, and, and what you've suggested is excellent. But actually built into both Mac and the latest version of Windows is uh, two tools. One's QuickTime which allows you to screencast very easily. And the other one is um, actually a games recording tool, which is, again, baked into Windows 10. And uh, it's designed to record very efficiently and is brilliant for recording. Um, What's the name of the games? Uh, the games recording uh, tool? It's literally Windows G. OK, cool. It's built into Windows 10. Uh, yeah. And you can record any window you like. You reckon that might be Windows' answer to QuickTime and the ease of... Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, nice. I, I've done it at a much more gaming angle, but I mean, okay. it, it is a screencasting tool. Cool. Does it give you any additional Another. options after recording or? Sorry. About uh, that. Well, they've got uh, the usual stuff that's available on Windows, like the Windows uh, editing tools and video stuff. Gabriel, but yeah, it's down. quick and easy. Um, yeah, I was just going to mention that um, if you're using like uh, an iPad or an iPad mini, there, there is um, a screen record option. So if you activate that in the settings, then you can record whatever is on your whatever is on your iPad. So mm -hmm. that, that's a very good option, especially for primary or elementary school students. Mm -hmm. It's Later pretty, you edit pretty simple. It's uh, using clips. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah, you can put yeah. it either in iMovie and you can edit it or um, the new iOS has an editor that's built in. So if you want to like shorten things up, mm. so when you press the button for record, you can like trim it down. So it eliminates that part. Mm. Um, mm. And you could theoretically, I, I, I'm not saying I've ever done this, nor taught this, nor would advocate this, but theoretically <laughs> you could Careful screen you record uh, any video that was on YouTube I mean, I'm not a huge. Ooh, I mean, yeah, so, so theoretically, you could you could do something like that. Not that I've ever done it, 
Hmm. Not that I've ever done it, but theoretically it is technically possible. Yeah. Yeah. Even I mean, even I, audio. True. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, okay. Because that's tough yeah. with Max. Sometimes it doesn't. There are things that are record screens, yeah. but the the yeah internal audio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so the inbuilt. If you whether you have an iPhone or an iPad or an iPad Mini, there's mm -hmm. an inbuilt like screen recorder that will record mm -hmm. your entire screen. Um, yeah. You you um, have to go to the settings and and set it up, and then it'll be in your uh, shortcuts basically. Yeah. I'll make sure not to endorse that. Yeah, don't, don't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, it's well, definitely yeah, like on YouTube. I'm just a little topic. heads up. This is being streamed on YouTube. It is definitely against the terms and services yeah. of YouTube. You do not want to be recording that. True. Uh, yeah. But I can see where you're coming from. I can see where you're coming from. You know, let's, yeah, okay, let's call it fair use. Um, something, I want, something I wanted to say about um, um, recording the screen of uh, a phone. Um, which I'm not sure if this recording option is available for iOS on the phone, but I like it. It's very useful. But it is. Um, I have just noticed a couple of uh, days ago after I have reinstalled um, a program called um, Easy Screen Recorder on Android, which mm -hmm. I paid for that, but uh, it's now, a, uh, sorry, it's not easy, it's AZ, AZ no. Screen Recorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I believe that I paid a couple of bucks for it. It wasn't expensive. And when I paid, it was possible to record the internal audio, like of um, whatever was was going on. For example, I'm very much into making music on devices. So with with that screen recorder, I could get the internal audio signal of the audio app I was using. Um, yeah. But you, sadly, you with, with 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 Android nowadays, Google prohibits that. So what what happens nowadays with that app is that it records for the microphone what the speakers do, and that's a digital break, I call it, and I hate that. I don't like that mm. at all. So uh, Google prohibits that, and Gabriel, sorry, I interrupted you there. That's possible so, with uh, phone? Yeah, so the iOS, if you go to uh, settings and go to control center, um, if you go to settings, control center, and then customize controls, there's the option that's literally called screen recording. And when you tap that screen record button, you can record the audio if you want to, or just the, um, no, you don't have to record audio. So it's all built in, super efficient. You don't have to pay, it's part of the iOS package. Okay. Wow. Um, I just saw that arc, our arc, you just said that you have to go. Um, yeah, just, I'm so sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. And again, thank you for being here, Ark. Yes, I learn a lot. And even though I'm being so, with uh, you guys, um, yeah, I learn a lot. You know, I'm gonna try, definitely gonna try Ed Puzzle, and uh, I'm also willing to try Nimbus Screen Recorder. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. And, and wow, Luke. this is a great. Yes, and classroom Luke. Zoom. Yes, I like it too. Classroom Thanks. Zoom. Okay. Really. Thank you. See you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Okay. For, who's, so who's for Edpuzzle, Ed just there a question go. about Edpuzzle. Sure. Um, so I was reading on um, Common Sense Media, because I'm also a Common Sense educator, mm -hmm. is that th th there were some what? cons about <laughs> Edpuzzle. Like some teachers had said that a lot of the videos on Edpuzzle are not the most interesting. A lot of them are kind of boring. So that's why they preferred just to go to like YouTube, essentially. Is that true? Um, um, the point of Edpuzzle is you pick the video. So you can pick any video yeah. you like from YouTube. Um, but some of the selected ones within Edpuzzle tend to be very safe. Um, mm. You know, sometimes that means boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think also, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, I think, with um, video in general, like as a teacher, don't just pull up a video and, and let it run in your classroom. Like, actually screen it. Like, watch what you're sharing. Mm -hmm. um, you never know. Like, half the video could be brilliant and the other half is just terrible. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I interrupted you, Eric. Um, you were going to say... Well, I mean, if you're going to use a program like that, a lot of times it's because for two, two reasons. One, you want to know the students watch the video at all. And two, you want to know that they processed it. And mm -hmm. uh, that's... Good. I mean, you know, if you've got a video that's um a hundred percent engaging and a hundred percent you know like where you have no doubts that the students will watch it and will process it then you might not put it on you might not put it on the ed puzzle 
you might not feel the need to. Is this an integration I can hear coming into class with Zoom where you can check how long people have watched the video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You share a video yeah, so. on, on, on Google Classroom and we'll find out yeah. how long you've watched and how many times. And... Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. That but is there... that puzzle, you can choose to use TED videos or YouTube videos. And the other thing is that you can crop the video. And I think that's really that, powerful. Actually, and yeah. voice over it, which means if the original narration wow. was bad, you can voice over it. So cool. really, it can save a lot better bad videos, basically. See, that's so, something I actually now I'm reminded of now that you mentioned that. Um, have, has any of you, have any of you used TED Ed? Oh, yeah, they've got a great tool too. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. TED Ed, an amazing tool. Like you can use a video, turn it into a proper lesson. Like you actually really? link the video and you've got like different, you know, objectives. And you, you just turn it into a lesson. Yeah. Um, it's an incredible, incredible tool, really focused on education. Um, and it comes from the whole TED Talks, and then, but then with an educational spin. Um, so, yeah, James, are you, have you used it? or? Yeah. I, and as I say, the, the difference between them is that the TED Ed is really good for humanities. Um, and it's really good for uh, encouraging uh, students to think and reflect. And it is, it's a full lesson plan. So it has the before, the after, and it takes you through it in, in really good detail. And what I want to stress with that one is that you can, again, can use any YouTube video. So you're not just um, limited to the TED videos themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gabriel? Yeah. I use, um, I don't know if you use like Google Slides, and then you can just like import any uh, YouTube video. And then if you go to the format options, then you can select where it starts and ends. And then, like, on the side, you could put, like, questions and stuff. I don't know if anyone's ever used Google yeah, Slides I mean, that I, way. Yeah, I, I use Slides all the time. And I, I love that you can mute the video as well. Because sometimes all you want is just visuals. Because you've already planned ahead. Like, this is what I'm going to say. This is what we're talking about. I want to do a bit of brainstorming with the kids. And, and you just want that video in the background. Um, and you can mute that. That's, that's one of the main things that I've got um, on the slides is the fact that you can automatically play the video, mute it and have a start and end time. So yeah, thank you for sharing that, Gabriel. Definitely, yeah, yeah that's, uh, can't leave that out. Does, has anyone else well, used the, the video in slides or? Does anyone want to do a demo? Hey, we can do demos. Who wants to do some screen sharing? <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to kind of, before I, I won't forget it, but um, to connecting to our original topic when students are away, I have mm -hmm. noticed just recently in some of my classes that um, we all are old enough to know the traditional idea of a teacher that the teacher is filled with knowledge and they have to share what they know. But um, mm -hmm. more and more teachers become facilitating and um, can be outsmarted by students, especially if it's in tech topics or, or issues which are commonly changing very rapidly, like social media or video stuff or um, memes, for example, yeah. Um, so we, as, we, we become more as a faci facilitator in, in, in the classroom. And uh, Khan Academy is, um, it blows my mind, yeah, how much you can learn on Khan Academy and how much, or, or it's completely free. And to be straightforward, um, who am I to com try to compete with these um, high floating educators who, who have all the tools and all the knowledge on Khan Academy. So um, especially from, from a distance, you, just, you can't, yeah, you can check actually, you can see exactly uh, which areas the students have been working on and how they performed on tests. It took me, it, it, it's a, I find it's a quite steep learning curve for coaches to get into the process of assigning um, lessons or courses and then only then they can see what the students have done mm -hmm. but it's fully integrated with Google Classroom so um, you choose what you want to uh, share and um, and uh, push it to Google Classroom the amount of lessons you, you decide yourself so I think that's awesome yeah no thank you definitely thank you for sharing that has anyone else used Khan Academy before or um... yeah yeah, and what what was your, what's your feedback on that? I haven't used it. Um, 
Yeah, it's good for like I used it for for maths and uh, to help students personalize their their learning. So they would go on the video and they would just do a topic that was related to them. It worked well with the year six, but I also found that um, there was limitations. So you still needed to sort of facilitate some of that knowledge. And um, yeah, yeah it, 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 they can't just go on it and just do it all by themselves. I mean, uh, Hattie has pointed out that actually computer-based learning is actually quite low in terms of learning effectiveness. And there was actually like the psychological study that, sh that was done on children where they had a baby try to learn from a screen and then a baby learn from a human being. And for some reason, the baby that was with the human being was able to learn, but the baby with the screen was not able to learn. So mm -hmm. um, the research does point out that a lot of these computer-based programs are actually not uh, the most effective, according to Hattie. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, yeah, can yeah. Be, they can be used for like certain specific targets, like you want to target a specific area, but holistically, like just putting them in front, sort of like the, you know, the Vulcan Academy, uh, yeah. it's just not, we're not there yet. So I mean, it, it's because it's the relationships, it. isn't it? Yeah. There you go. It's something with the human brain the because we're social animals, right? As well. mm -hmm. And I think that brings us back to, um, to when we were talking about the screencastify and the screen recording. Like that's one of the things that Second. we've actually got the power is as a teacher, um, when we are recording the content and we are sharing that with our students, that is so much more powerful than this stranger yeah. uh, in the distance sort of feeding us information and all this other yeah. stuff. So I, I definitely agree with Gabriel and James there um, that it's just it's, it's, it's that relationship. I mean, your students, I mean, they're not going to learn from you if they don't like you. Like mm -hmm. if you're if you're one of those teachers and you say, look, they don't pay me to like the kids. Well, sorry. Here's some bad news. Mm. If they don't pay you to like the kids, then the kids aren't going to learn from you yeah. because they can't I, wait to leave. Mm, so you yeah. need to have that relationship. Um, and I think that's where video recording, I mean, it's one of those things that, that drove me onto YouTube is sort of, it wasn't because I wanted to do what I'm doing now and sort of record videos. It was literally, I just wanted a video that I could send to the students, have them practice at home and then come back to class and just do it all over again. Yeah. Flipping the classroom. That's that's yeah, your yeah. name. That's so, why yeah. that's why the classroom's named flipped classroom. It's yeah. no longer only about flipping. Nobody classroom. knew that you uh, that that it would uh, <laughs> become so so big and yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. I, yeah. I don't think anyone knows what's gonna happen. I mean, look at our web show. We've got three viewers. Who the wow. what about what, what I wanted a, to say about Khan Academy is that um, if you assign it to students, I found it best if you to put little chunks in front of them yeah if you if mm. you assign a whole block um they're quickly overwhelmed and think oh it's never gonna stop and i'll sit here for hours mm. and yeah and always try to get some feedback from the students what is good about it what what did yeah, they enjoy yeah. doing and as yeah. you know as i mentioned before there are different kinds of learning styles and yeah and we should be yeah. able to foster but i think we should learning. also be careful of that theory about learning style it's about the multi use of it because the learning styles themselves have been largely debunked yeah yeah mm. well it also depends on like i, I was like obviously i'm a primary elementary educator mm -hmm. so i feel like my secondary colleagues and my and my students are kind of in two different worlds like you know, in our world, like in our world in, in primary, if we say you have to do this, then the children just do it and the parents are there. But in secondary, you know, the children are more independent. So if you assign a video, will they watch it or not? Like they, mm. they're, they're, they're quite cheeky, especially like when they get to like year six, for example, mm -hmm. they're, they're not as compliant as they used to be when they were like in year, in the previous years. James, you're, you're so, teaching secondary predominantly, right? So yes, I'm teaching secondary. And I have to say we have excellent kids in our school. Um, but Khan Academy, I've used it for SQL a bit. Um, edX, the thing is that they like is that it's coming from real universities. And Coursera is the same because they're coming from really prestigious institutions. And then you are stay, taking that step back. You are facilitating, helping them, helping them with the challenges. Um, but they, they, they like to have those videos and they do have production values, some of those videos, particularly yeah, the, oh, definitely. the M MIT yeah. ones. But I think, yeah, you are helping and supporting and cheerleading. Um, and yeah, you, you, you're almost becoming a classroom assistant at that point. 
Uh, yeah. to, that's to because the secondary yeah. students, like, that's because probably like the secondary students are in the formal operational stages of their development and yeah, they have exactly. those skills and abilities, whereas our students are in the concrete or the pre-operational stage. So they need much more adult support. Mm. And those videos, you know, a lot, a lot of the language, because we also have EAL learners, mm. uh, is just too advanced for them in many ways. Right. I'm, I'm just going to quickly jump in because I think Gary, Gary was uh, saying that he, he has something to share as well about well, Khan Academy. And I, haven't, I haven't really used Khan Academy, but it helped my daughter to be more independent. She's in uh, eighth grade right now. Um, I have no problem with it because uh, my daughter learns a lot and there are some questions that I can't really answer. But when she uses uh, Khan Academy, she got her answer. So yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's, it's also a good one, a good resource. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, brilliant, right. So we've already talked about quite a few uh, different uh, programs that we can use here i see we're about to hit uh we're about 55 minutes into our live show we've had quite a few comments come in um if anyone's still watching uh don't forget share out share it out we need more people watching we need more people asking questions um by all means jump um, in um if Gary, you want to jump into yes this, go, go have ahead. you used uh wolf wolf it's it's wolf gram alpha mm -hmm. oh, yeah. wolf gram that's another yeah. one that's sort of like Khan Academy-ish, but again, it's more for like secondary, I feel. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but it has experience so about thank you for that. Can you um, put yeah. it in the comments so I can remember that? Yeah, Wolf we'll, from Alpha do, is do also wanna, on all Raspberry Pis by default. So yeah, I'm on, that's I'm on, um, yeah, you want to put that Wolfgram yeah, Alpha, yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't get the academic background why Khan Academy is difficult at some point. I understand that um, you need to be a, a bit more responsible as a learner, but um, they go down to grade one, yeah, with math mm -hmm. skills. And um, yeah. I find the ways, I, I can literally now see how they deal with 10 blocks and one blocks and 100 blocks, like with the drawings. And but the reason why it doesn't work so well is because what he's doing on the screen is by its very nature, he's going to the abstract and pictorial phase. And for a lot of the younger children, they need that concrete phase because they're in the concrete operational stages of their development. So that's where it doesn't work so well with younger children because they actually need to physically manipulate the Dean's blocks themselves so they need to, to see them and to touch them to, in order to relate the two concepts together. So, some, so sometimes that's the limitation. But of course, there are some children that can, can sort of manipulate those images and those uh, symbols in their brains. But, so, yeah. I mean, I think for young people, the other thing is to actually um, watch the video as a teacher if you don't know that concept for whatever reason. Oh, definitely. And yeah. share with the kids. Um, yeah. And actually, I would imagine if you did that experiment, you would find that actually more effective. Um, but we are talking very young kids here, Ralph. We're, I, we're talking about six, seven, eight-year-olds yeah. or younger. So, and yeah. you always have to make it fun for them. Like, they, they, if it's not fun, then they kind of – they will rebel. Like, I had – actually, I had a very funny experience because I had a colleague of mine, reception teacher, and she's not a coder at all. She doesn't – do coding she doesn't do technology but i said to her listen we've got these osmo coding kits mm -hmm. uh and uh, and you know you could use them with your students and so she was apprehensive so she brought them in and the moment the kids saw the, the osmo coding kits um they they immediately liked it and then the the next day one child came up to her and this child never speaks to her and she said oh can we do coding and like she was absolutely amazed that this child that never speaks to her as was asking her to do coding. And then the children were extremely well behaved because they wanted to do the coding activity. So they, the children figured out that, hey, you know, you are going to give us what we want. It, or if not, we're going to be very annoying. So you, you have to make it sort of fun. 
which yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and I that's, that's quite the same physical, thing. Secondary, it? Osmo, it's quite physical, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. To, they put it together. A reality thing. Yeah, um, and they also work nicely together. They like working with each other hmm. to make the blocks. Yeah, the sequence blocks. Yeah. Which, which kits do you have? Do you have them all, or do you have a favorite? We have them all. Yeah, we got the we got the jam. We got the Osmo Albi. We've got the Tangrams, the numbers, but they, they love the, uh, the Osmo Albi and they love helping him get the strawberries and then build his home. So it's very gamified. It's really gamified. Yeah. 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 And uh, in terms, in terms of sort of the, the collaboration with the students and how, how are they doing? How are they doing? How many groups do you have and how many? So what I do is I put them in pairs, usually in pairs or in threes maximum. And then what they do is that they have to work together collaboratively in order to come up with the coding sequences. So sometimes I'll say, okay, one person is going to be the code master. So they're going to think about the lines of code and the other one's going to be the code builder and they're going to build the, the, the sequence blocks. Okay. And so both of them have to work together. One person has to speak. The other person has to do. And it's usually like the child, there's usually like one child that knows how to do it better than the other. So they can learn from each other, basically. Brilliant. Okay. You've gone very quiet, Seth. Have I? Do you feel yes. Or not? I'm playing around with my microphone a bit. Apparently no, it's, uh, microphone. it was much, much uh, softer than it uh, used to be in the beginning. Is it yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. I think you're farther away from your microphone. Okay. Do you I, use the internal microphone I'm now? I'm going to try. I'm going to try and sort this out. If if somebody takes the lead on this one, um, I think we've right. I think it's almost time. about time to wrap it up anyway. So yeah. thank yeah. you for all, all your suggestions. Um, um, and I think you know we've created some interesting things. And I think if your school does close, having those high quality <laughs> resources from Khan Academy, edX, uh, Coursera is definitely a good stopgap. Yeah. Um, while you wait, and I think. Ed Puzzle and YouTube and those screencasting tools are amazing. And Google Classroom is incredible in itself and in terms of setting. And the TED Ed Lessons, again, another fantastic resource that will really step in and help you during these tough times. So thank you very much for today's session. Um, we'll go offline now and decide by random route from the people <laughs> who have access to the YouTube. <laughs> Uh, who goes next? I love the idea. I love it. All right, time to switch yeah. it off then. All right. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Every Thursday, uh, thank you hopefully. Gabriel, from Gary, Bye -bye. Everyone in the chat. Um, just yeah. Thank you. Um, I'll go offline now, and I will see you in the backstage. So we are going to yes. end the broadcast now. Bye, bye. Bye, guys. Happy Thursday, everybody.